Today we create this scene right here. It is super easy to do. Everyone should be able to follow my video. Yeah. I will show you step by step how I created the scene and explain every click I did to achieve this result. So buckle up and let's get started. First I added a cube, scaled it up a bit and in edit mode deleted the front face to create the room. After that I scaled it up on the X and Y axis just to make the room a little bit bigger. In edit mode I pressed Ctrl R to add in some loop cuts. I did it on the vertical and on the horizontal axis. I did this to select a few faces on the front wall and delete them to create some windows. Because the room is paper thin, I added the solidify modifier to give it some depth and checked even thickness. After that, I selected the little arrow and hit apply to apply the modifier to it. I do this to have real geometry to work with. At this point, I already added in a camera. I always do this as soon as possible so I can see what is actually in the frame and what I have to focus on. Now I wanted to add in those wood bars in between the windows. To create the first vertical one, I added in some more loop cuts, select the top and the bottom face, right clicked and selected bridge faces. This created the first wood bar. On the horizontal bar I ran into a problem because there were already two faces. After some trial error I selected the edge and pressed Ctrl B to bevel the line. No, this creates some weird typology but because I knew this wall will be in the back in the final image and super dark so you won't really see small details in the textures this was good enough for me. So I beveled the two edges, selected the face, right click and selected bridge face again. I did this for each window to create the bars in between the windows. To make it a little bit more realistic I added in a bevel modifier to the whole object because no object in the real world has such sharp edges so I just beveled them by a tiny bit. After that I wanted to focus on the light so I went into cycle mode and added in an area light. I dragged this one out of the room, scaled it up and placed it behind the windows. I increased intensity and changed the light to a warm orange tone. Now we want to add in some grass and some flowers to the floor, therefore we have to separate the floor. So select all the faces you want plants to be scattered on, press P to open up the separate options and choose by selection. This will separate the floor from the rest of the room and you have a separate object. To this object I added a particle system and changed it to hair. I lowered the hair length a bit and now we want to replace the hair with some real objects or some real flowers and plants. I searched the plant on the Megascans Bridge app because they have a great variety of flowers and plants. But if you don't want to use Megascans you can use any assets from maybe Sketchfab or CG Trade or whatever or create your own and we can continue from there. After I found one, I downloaded them and exported it to Blender. Sadly in the 4.2 versions the material won't get exported so I have to do it manually. Select all your objects, go into the materials tab and add in a new material. Press tab to go into edit mode and hit assign so the material is assigned to the whole object. Now in the shadings tab you can select the principal BSDF and press shift, control and T. This will open up the Blender Explorer where you can search the path of the textures of your plant. All you have to do at that point is select each texture you want integrated into material and hit import. Because of the node wrangle add-on that is built in, in Blender all textures will be linked up correctly already. Now only one plant has the textures and the rest is still missing it. To fix that you have to select all the plants you want the material to be assigned to, press Ctrl L to link the material and choose material. Now we don't want to scatter each individual plant by itself, so we select all the plants, press M to create a new collection and call it flowers. Now in the particle system on the render we can choose collection to scatter a whole collection and choose the flower collection we just created. Change the scale to 1 and we can see the flower gets scattered around the floor. Because it was a little bit laggy I changed the number from 1000 to 100 and under children I choose interpolated. This will create duplicates of the same object but it's not that heavy for the PC. The display amount I changed to 25, this is what you can see in the viewport and the render amount I changed to 50. To get some more variation you can change the scale randomness to something like 0.5. 
You can also check advanced to get the rotation settings. In there you can further randomize the rotation of the flowers and the plants to get a more natural feeling. To get a sharper light I selected it and in the settings I lowered the spread amount. The smaller the spread is the sharper the light gets. This can help in certain situations and this is one of it. To add in a wood texture for the room I used the blender kit add-on. You can just type in what material you're looking for and you can choose one of many free materials that will be added to the object instantly. Now to give the image some story or some meaning I searched a deer model on Sketchfab. With the Sketchfab add-on you can just copy the URL of your model, paste it in the Blender add-on and this will import the model with the textures instantly. Now to give the scene a foggy atmosphere we have to create a new cube and scale it up over the whole scene. In the shader editor we add in a new material, delete the principal BSDF and add in a principal volume. Connect it to the volume and lower the density value until you find something that looks good. Because the whole scene was super foggy and the camera was foggy too, I moved this fog sphere a little bit more in the front so it only affected the room and not the camera. This helps to light up the whole interior. To add in some more light I used an HDRI. I love the easy HDRI add-on where you can just select an HDRI of a folder of your computer and it will be imported into Blender correctly. At this stage you can do whatever you want. I wanted to add in some smaller trees outside of the window just to give it some more depth. I also changed the camera perspective a little bit until I found something I liked. To get some more variations in the plants I added in a second plant type. I moved them in the flower folder and because we scatter the whole collection it will be added automatically. To add in some bloom we have to render out one image. We go into the compositing tab and add in a viewer node and connect them with the render. Now to create some bloom we have to add in the glare node and connect them to the composite and to the viewer node. In the glare node choose bloom and change the size and the threshold until you find the setting that works best for your scene. At this point I rendered out the scene and saved it. But don't stop there, always put it in a software where you can do some color grading to lift it up from good to wow. And that was it for today. I hope you could recreate the scene or create something similar, maybe learn some new techniques. And if you have enjoyed the video, like it and leave a comment if you want to see more. That being said, have a good day and I see you the next time. Peace out.